Good morning, my name is Seth Horst. I am Lennon Ferris's third child. Uh, some of the things I like to do are play sports and drive my mother crazy. <laughs> I am up here today to share my testimony. I was born on September 22nd, 2002 into a Christian loving family. My childhood was very good with my family always teaching me new things about life and Jesus, and they still are to this day. But one of the struggles in my life was when I was eight, my mom uh, got diagnosed with cancer. Um, I was younger, so it didn't really affect me, even though it affected my family greatly. It was just like my mom getting sick again. I, but I could see that my whole family was very sad and uh, not their bright sel selves like they usually are. But thankfully, the grace of God came in uh, the same year in January. My mom had surgery, and she became cancer-free, and she is a six-year cancer survivor. Um, and I could tell that my family just brightened up and were way happier like they used to be. Um, one of the things that influenced me greatly through my life is Conestoga Bible Camp. I bet most of you know it. Um, I've been going there since I was seven, and this last summer was just my last year. Um, when I was younger, I really didn't go into the aspect of trying to actually find God. It was more of just having fun and hanging with my friends. But for the past two years, I've been really trying to find God, and especially this last year, I stayed at lunch and talked to my favorite counselor, and I really, like, branched out to God and really learned more, a lot more than I ever have at CBC, and it was just a really great year to be at CBC, and I learned so much. Um, for these past few years, I have had a hard time believing God and had a hard time trying to find him. But King David, um, who was Israel's greatest king, stayed true to God and truly believed in him. I'm trying to strive to be like King David, especially since I went into grade nine this year, and I'm finding that it is really hard to connect with God and find him. Uh, so that's why I'm trying to be like King, King David. Let's just say I'm a work in progress. <laughs> um, I just have a verse. It's James 1, 22 to 25. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. I can connect to this Bible verse because right now I'm having trouble and I'm kind of forgetting God's word. I'm trying to be the person in the mirror who remembers what they look like, not the person who forgets what they look like. And uh, right now I'm just pretty much trying to change from uh, the person who forgets to the person who remembers. Uh, thank you, and now we will be having worship and song. Okay, so before I start, I just want to say that Jessica Martin had helped out with this, and if this goes half decent, make sure to find her after the service too, and if it doesn't go well, make sure to find her while I <laughs> sneak out the back door, and yeah, if you've seen me this morning carrying around a pink notebook, it's not mine, it's Jessica's. <laughs> But this past year, I had gone to Conestoga Bible Camp's youth camp, 
and that was for a week this summer. And youth camp is a one week overnight camp for students of high school age. And it's like any other camp, there's sports, games, running. Yeah, you get to hang out with your friends. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. And at youth camp, there's a speaker that stays over the whole week with us. And he presents about like two mini messages or whatever uh, at both sessions in the day. And this year, the speaker was a guy by the name of Kevin Nethercott, who's from the Listowel area. And he works out of the Listowel High School, um, just running like after school programs and at lunch programs uh, for the kids. And he, they just play games, hang out, and he gets to know the kids. And like these kids tell him a lot. And like when they're going through like hard times, um, they come to him and he just like shares with them and he helps them through. And yeah, but at youth camp this year, he spoke on this idea of churchianity which I had never heard of until youth camp. And that's kind of what I want to, or what we wanted to base our message on this morning. So to start off, I just want to read the definition of churchianity. So any practices of Christianity that are viewed as placing a larger emphasis on the habits of church than on theology and spiritual teachings of Jesus. And most of you probably know, or my friends at least, I'm not very bright, and big words confuse me. <laughs> so I made like a little bit of a simpler definition, uh, which can be kind of split into two parts, and that's kind of going to lead into what I want to say this morning. So Christianity is the same concept as Christianity, except instead of placing the focus on Jesus and what he did for us, and how we should be following his ways and living out uh, every day for him, we, or I know for myself anyways, we come to church uh, ready to learn, fellowship, and grow, and that's our focus for those couple hours that we're here. And then as soon as it's over and we get into our cars, we're immediately thinking about getting so-and-so to hockey or hoping the casserole isn't burnt that we put in before church or dreading those massive piles of homework that we've put off all weekend that are due on Monday. And soon after that, um, we put what we just learned that morning on the second shelf, and we're back to our busy lives. Now, the second part of the definition is basically t uh, just talking about what our main focus should be and taking that farther with us than to the edge of the parking lot before we forget about it and shove it to the back of our brains. I think that we as Christians should take what we've learned and take it with us throughout our lives and work on putting it into practice and putting it into our daily lives. And it'll be hard and we'll fail, but we'll also be victorious because God is always with us and he will never let an obstacle be thrown at, thrown at us that he knows we can't handle. And then coming back the next week, it should be exciting in the fact that you can talk with fellow Christians about how your week was and how you failed and how you succeeded and how it has or hasn't changed your life. But also exciting because you get to learn something new and get ready to put that into your life. And I know it doesn't just take a week to learn something new and to put it into your walk with Jesus and then you've got it for the rest of your life. But it's a start, and if we try, God knows that, and he can see that we're trying, and others will be able to, too. And, yeah, um, if we just try to put it into our daily lives and, like, work on it, then um, others will be able to see that, and he'll be able to, they'll be able to see that we're a Christian, and they'll be able to see his love through us. And, oh, shoot, I forgot to show or get Travis this video that I wanted to show this morning. Oh, you got the video? Oh, Travis, can you put it up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this video 
is a spoken word video that me and Jessica had found, and we feel that it has some good points that really kind of tie into what we had wanted to say this morning. What if I told you Jesus came to abolish religion? What if I told you voting Republican really wasn't his mission? What if I told you Republican doesn't automatically mean Christian and just because you call some people blind doesn't automatically give you vision? I mean, if religion is so great, why has it started so many wars? Why does it build huge churches but fails to feed the poor? Tell single moms God doesn't love them if they've ever had a divorce, but in the Old Testament, God actually calls religious people whores. Religion might preach grace, but another thing they practice, tend to ridicule God's people, they did it to John the Baptist. They can't fix their problems, and so they just mask it, not realizing religion's like spraying perfume on a casket. See, the problem with religion is it never gets to the core. It's just behavior modification, like a long list of chores. Like, let's dress up the outside, make it look nice and neat. But it's funny, that's what they used to do to mummies while the corpse rots underneath. Now I ain't judging, I'm just saying, quit putting on a fake look. Because there's a problem if people only know that you're a Christian by your Facebook. I mean, in every other aspect of life, you know that logic's unworthy. It's like saying you play for the Lakers just because you bought a jersey. See, this was me too, but no one seemed to be on to me. Acting like a church kid while addicted to pornography. See, on Sunday I'd go to church, but Saturday getting faded, acting if I was simply created to just have sex and get wasted. See, I spent my whole life building this facade of neatness, but now that I know Jesus, I boast in my weakness. Because if grace is water, then the church should be an ocean. It's not a museum for good people, it's a hospital for the broken, which means I don't have to hide my failure, I don't have to hide my sin. Because it doesn't depend on me, it depends on him. See, because when I was God's enemy, and certainly not a fan, he looked down and said, I want that man. but, or by going to church and Bible study when really we're not where we want to be with God and we're just putting on a mask to kind of cover up what we don't want others to know. And he also makes a point that ties like right into what we were talking about, but it might be to a bit more of an extreme, but maybe not. He says the line, on Sunday I go to church, but on Saturday getting faded. Now this really shows what, we're meaning when we talk about shoving God aside for the rest of the week and then coming back on Sunday like it's all okay. He does say it to like probably more of an extreme, but it gets the point across. And yeah, God doesn't want us to just come to church and like coming to church is great, but he doesn't want us to come to church and then go back and immediately forget it all and just think about work and school friends, hockey, whatever. He wants us to like go and have him with us in every portion of our lives and like, yeah, just be able to like ooze God's love for others and just show God's love to others so that hopefully they can see him and um, yeah, hopefully find him if they haven't found him already. Now, like after listening to this message, your mind's probably going in a million directions and, but what we really wanted to say is that we're not saying that you have to do this and you have to do that and that there's rules and regulations that you have to follow, but that we should want to live every day out for God because of the love that he has shown us and the love that um, we have for him.